Lazenby is also the only Bond actor to receive Golden Globe recognition for his performance, earning a nomination for the Golden Globe Award for New Star of the Year, actor. Prior to appearing as Bond, Lazenby was a model and appeared in advertising, after declining to do another Bond film, because he was told that the Bond films would not continue into the 1970s, Lazenby's career stalled in that decade and he moved into business and invested in real estate, he later appeared in several films and television series, including roles spoofing the James Bond character, in 2017, a documentary entitled Becoming Bond was released on Hulu, featuring Lazenby recounting his life story, Lazenby has been married twice, first to Christina Gannett, 1971-1995, heiress to the Gannett News Service Publishing Empire, and then from 2002-2008 to tennis player Pam Shriver, equals equals early life in Australia equals equals, Lazenby was born in 1939 in Goulburn, New South Wales, at Avada Private Hospital, to railway worker George Edward Lazenby and Sheila Joan Lazenby, nay Bottle, who worked at Fossies, he went to Goulburn Public School in his primary years, and Goulburn High until either 1953 or 1954. His sister, Barbara, was an accomplished dancer. When he was young he spent 18 months in hospital after having an operation which left him with only half a kidney. When Lazenby was about 14 he moved with his family from Goulburn to Queenbeyan, where his father ran a store. He worked as a car salesman and mechanic, before serving in the Australian Army. Equals equals modeling equals equals. Lazenby moved to London in 1963 to pursue a woman he'd fallen in love with. He became a used car salesman in Finchley, then sold new cars in Park Lane. He was spotted by a talent scout who persuaded him to become a model, and he was soon earning £25,000 a year. He was best known for an advertisement for Big Fry Chocolate. In 1966 he was voted top model of the year. Equals equals James Bond equals equals. In 1968, after Sean Connery quit the role of James Bond, Producer Albert R. Broccoli first met Lazenby when they were getting their hair cut at the same barber. He later saw him in the Big Fry commercial and felt he could be a possible Bond, calling him in for a screen test. Lazenby dressed for the part by sporting several sartorial Bond elements such as a Rolex Submariner wristwatch and a Savile Row suit, which had been ordered, but not collected, by Connery. Broccoli offered him an audition. The position was consolidated when Lazenby accidentally punched a professional wrestler, who was acting as stunt coordinator, in the face, impressing broccoli with his ability to display aggression. Director Peter R. Hunt later claimed, we wanted someone who used sexual assurance, and we think this fellow has that. Just wait till the women see him on screen. I am not saying he is an actor. There is a great deal of difference between an actor and a film star. Didn't they find Gary Cooper when he was an electrician? In July 1969 Lazenby returned home to Queenbeyan to see his parents. He said he had 18 films to consider, but it's all commercial rubbish, such as the guy getting the girl at the end of the Battle of Britain, he said. I'll just have to wait and see. At this stage Lazenby said he intended to make the next Bond film, The Man with the Golden Gun. Equals 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 leaving Bond equals equals equals. In November 1969, Prior to the release of the film, Lazenby announced that he no longer wished to play the role of James Bond, saying, The producers made me feel like I was mindless. They disregarded everything I suggested simply because I hadn't been in the film business like them for about a thousand years. His co-star Deanna Rigg was among many who commented on this decision. The role made Sean Connery a millionaire. It made Sean Connery. I truly don't know what's happening in George's mind so I can only speak of my reaction. I think it's a pretty foolish move. I think if he can bear to do an apprenticeship, which everybody in this business has to do, has to do, then he should do it quietly and with humility. Everybody has to do it. There are a few instant successes in the film business, and the instant successes one usually associates with somebody who is willing to learn anyway. Rig was also quoted as saying, I can no longer cater for his obsession with himself. He is utterly, unbelievably, bloody impossible. I draw a veil over the chap, said Desmond Llewellyn, who played Q in 17 Bond films. How can you expect someone who's never acted before, to take on a leading role? Lazenby grew a beard and long hair. Bond is a brute. I've already put him behind me. I will never play him again. Peace, that's the message now, he announced. I much prefer being a car salesman to a stereotyped James Bond, he said. My parents think I'm insane. Everybody thinks I'm insane passing up maybe millions of pounds. Nobody believed me. They thought it was a publicity stunt. But it's just me doing my own thing, he later elaborated. Fantasy doesn't interest me. Reality does. Anyone who's in touch with the kids knows what's happening, knows the mood. Watch pop music and learn what's going to happen. Most filmmakers don't watch and aren't in touch. 
people aren't going to films because filmmakers are putting out films people don't want to see. As for the so-called tomorrow movies they are only tomorrow movies with yesterday directors. Actors aren't all that important. Directors are. I'm terribly impressed with Dennis Hopper. I'd like to work for him. I also like Arthur Penn, John Schlesinger and Peter Yates. What I'm going to do is look for a great director first, a good screenplay second. Meanwhile, no more Bond. I make better money doing commercials. At the time of the release of OHMSS, Lazenby's performance received mixed reviews. Some felt that, while he was physically convincing, some of his costumes were inappropriate, too loud according to some, and that he delivered his lines poorly. Others, however, have developed differing views in the decades since the film. In the 1998 book The Essential James Bond, Lee Pfeiffer and Dave Worrell write, although OHMSS was routinely dismissed by critics who cited Lazenby as a brave but disappointing successor to Connery, the intervening years have been notably kinder to both the film and its star. Indeed, due in no small part to Peter Hunt's inspired direction, OHMSS generally ranks among the top films with fans. Likewise, Lazenby has emerged as a very popular contributor to the series and has enjoyed large enthusiastic audiences during his appearances at Bond-related events. In summary, OHMSS is a brilliant thriller in its own right and justifiably ranks amongst the best Bond films ever made. In Roger Moore's commentary for a 2007 DVD release of The Man with the Golden Gun, he made reference to George Lazenby as follows, I have a great deal of email contact with George Lazenby, he's sort of on the joke circuit, that we simply send jokes to each other. OHMSS, very well made film, Peter Hunt, excellent, excellent, excellent fight stuff, excellent snow effects, but I think the end result for George was that it was one of the better bonds. Broccoli told the press shortly after the film's release. I don't agree with the press. I think they should have given him a for effort. It's true he's not Olivier but Olivier could not play Bond in any circumstances. John Aspinall's mother Lady Osborne told me she thought he was the best of the Bonds. Broccoli did admit that he found Lazenby's post-movie attitude annoying. I find it incredible that a plum role can't be respected. We chose George because in his physique and his looks and his walk he was the best of the candidates. He had the masculinity. Looking at the film, to put it in an old Spanish phrase, one could wish he had less cojones and more charm. Although Lazenby had been offered a contract for seven movies, his agent, Ronan O'Rahilly, convinced him that the secret agent would be archaic in the liberated 1970s, and as a result he left the series after the release of On Her Majesty's Secret Service in 1969. After this role Lazenby began to study drama at Durham University's College of the Venerable Bede. Lazenby has portrayed James Bond several times over the years in numerous parodies and unofficial 007 roles, most notably the 1983 television film The Return of the Man from Uncle, in which his character is identified only by the initials JB. 1996 video game Fox Hunt, parts of which were redited into a feature film, and an episode of the new Alfred Hitchcock Presents, entitled Diamonds Aren't Forever. In 2012 Lazenby made a guest appearance on the Canadian sketch comedy series This Hour Has 22 Minutes minutes, spoofing the 007 series in a skit called Help, I've Skyfallen and I Can't Get Up. Although Ian Productions attempted on several occasions to cast Americans as Bond, most notably signing John Gavin for Diamonds Are Forever before the services of Sean Connery were obtained, Lazenby remains the only actor from outside the British Isles to have portrayed Bond in a Bond feature film. Equals equals post Bond career equals equals. For a time there was some talk Lazenby would appear in a Western, Deacon. He talked to the press about his use of LSD and marijuana and was involved in a well-publicized incident helping a friend of his who was arrested in Germany. He grew his hair and a mustache and talked about rejecting the trappings of materialism. Lazenby eventually made another film a year after on Her Majesty's Secret Service, Universal Soldier, 1971, which he helped write. He said the movie was anti-guns and anti-bond, a comedy with no plot. It is really just a series of happenings which keep the audience entertained. This is the kind of film which is coming out in Europe now. It starred Chrissy Townsend, his 18-year-old girl friend. The film was a financial disaster which was barely released. After the Bond fiasco nobody would touch me, admitted Lazenby. Harry Saltzman had always said, if you don't do another Bond you'll wind up doing spaghetti westerns in Italy. But I couldn't even get one of those. My agent couldn't believe it. But the word was out. I was. Difficult. Lazenby next appeared in the 1972 Italian film, Who Saw Her Die. He spent the next 15 months sailing around the world with Chrissy Townsend which ended when she became pregnant with their first child, 
Prompting Lazenby to settle down and try to reactivate his career as an actor, Lazenby played a role in the BBC's Play for Today series in 1973, starring in Roger Smith's The Operation. Broccoli claims that Lazenby asked for another chance to play James Bond in 1971 but the producer refused. Equals 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 Hong Kong equals equals equals. In 1973, Lazenby said he was flat broke when he went to Hong Kong to meet Bruce Lee and producer Raymond Chow. They ended up offering him $10,000 to appear in a film with with Lee, which was going to be the Golden Harvest film Game of Death. However this collapsed after Lee's sudden death, Lazenby was actually meant to meet up with Lee for lunch on the day that Lee died. Instead it was announced Lazenby would make the Golden Needles of Ecstasy for Golden Harvest. I'm excited to be able to concentrate on just acting in this film, he said. On Universal Soldier I was involved in the production, the writing and even a bit in direction. I don't think I'm a good enough actor to get fragmented like that on a job. Now I can give my full concentration to acting. I hope it will be good and lead to other roles. He revealed he had been consulting an astrologer for four years. Even before I made the Bond picture she said I would become famous, and that there would be big problems for a couple of years, he said. Then she assured me that I would be back at the top of my profession by the end of 1973. It's absolutely fantastic, because everything she has told me has happened. In the end, Lazenby did not make Golden Needles but shot three other films for Golden Harvest, Stoner, 1974, aka The Shrine of Ultimate Bliss, The Man from Hong Hong Kong, 1975, also known as The Dragon Flies, and A Queen's Ransom, 1976, equals 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 Australia equals equals equals. In the mid-1970s, he appeared in a number of television movies shot in Australia, and an episode of the local police drama series Madlock Police. He also returned to modeling, appearing in a number of advertisements for Benson and Hedges cigarettes. A few years later he told an Australian magazine, I got a few roles but nothing spectacular, yet I was ready, willing and able to work. I just don't think I'm going to make it here. If something good came along I'd stay, though. Equals 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 Hollywood equals equals equals. In the late 1970s Lazenby moved to Hollywood where he started taking acting lessons and set about trying to reactivate his career. I enjoy the States, to be quite honest about it, he said. I've got an American wife and green card so I have the best of both worlds. In 1978 Broccoli described casting Lazenby as my biggest mistake in 16 years. He just couldn't deal with success. He was so arrogant. There was the stature and looks of a Bond but Lazenby couldn't get along with the other performers and technicians. Sean Connery came to Lazenby's defense saying I have known George for many years and arrogance is not in his character. Alas I cannot say the same for Cubby Broccoli. The interesting thing about that is, I've never met Sean, said Lazenby. I don't know him at all. Once, years ago, he came to pick up someone who was staying at my house and I saw him through the door. That's all. But I always admired him. I tried to copy him when I played Bond because, after all, I wasn't an actor so I thought my best chance would be to try and be as close to Connery as I could. Lazenby went on to add, It hasn't been easy, trying to climb back. I admit I acted stupidly. It went to my head, everything that was happening to me. But remember, it was my first film. Now what I've got to do is live down my past convince people I'm not the same person who made a fool of himself all those years ago. I know I can do it. All I need is the chance. In 1978, he took out an advertisement in Variety, offering himself for acting work. If I could get a TV series or a good movie, I swear I'd do it for nothing, he told a journalist. People ask me if the Bond movie wasn't worth it if it got me into acting. It's true that it got me in, but it wasn't worth the 10 years it cost me. He was particularly keen to do the Thorn Birds, but that project was not made until a number of years later and without Lazenby, he did manage to secure roles in Hawaii 5-0 and Evening in Byzantium. The latter was seen by Harry Saltzman who offered Lazenby a leading role in a proposed science fiction film The Micronauts. When I tossed Bond in after one movie he said he'd make sure I never got another job, said Lazenby. Now he's offering me one. It seems that the 10-year sentence is up. Harry saw me in a TV show I'd recently made for NBC. He rang me up out of the blue and said, now that was a damn lousy show, but one thought that you were G.E.R. Reed. However the movie was never made. Lazenby made a guest appearance on the television series Superboy, as an alien disguised as Jor-El, in a two-part episode during the series' second season in 1990. He appeared with Sylvia Crystal in several new Emmanuel films in the 1990s, many of which appeared on cable television. In 1993, Lazenby had a part in the film Gettysburg as Confederate General Johnston Pettigrew. On 19 September 2013, 
Comedian Jim Jeffries announced on Twitter that Lazenby would be playing his father in the upcoming second season of his FX network sitcom Legit. Equals equals influence on popular culture equals equals. Lazenby's single portrayal of the iconic Bond character, and his lack of standing as a favorite in the series has resulted in his name being used as a metaphor for forgettable, non-iconic acting efforts in other entertainment franchises, and for entities that are largely ignored. In his review of Batman and Robin, widely regarded as the weakest and least successful film in the Batman film franchise, Mick LaSalle of the San Francisco Chronicle said that George Clooney should go down in history as the George Lazenby of the series. Actor Paul McGann has described himself with good humor as the George Lazenby of Doctor Who because, although he has continued in the role of the Eighth Doctor in other media, he made only two appearances on TV as the Time Lord. In a September 2006 episode of The Daily Show, comedian John Oliver suggested that Pope Benedict XVI is the George Lazenby of the papacy, in comparison to John Paul II. Sean Connery. In 2010 Roger Moore, who also played James Bond, provided the voice of a talking cat character named Tab Lazenby in the film Cats and Dogs, The Revenge of Kitty Galore, which contained several references to, and parodies of, Bond films. Equals equals personal life equals equals. In 1973, Lazenby married his girlfriend of three years, Chrissy Townsend, a member of the Gannett family. They subsequently had two children, Zachary and Melanie. Zachary was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor when he was 11 and died when he was 19 years old. Melanie became a real estate broker in New York. In 2002 Lazenby married former tennis player Pam Shriver. In August 2008, it was reported that Shriver had filed for divorce from Lazenby. Documents filed in Los Angeles Superior Court cite irreconcilable differences for the end of the couple's six-year marriage. The couple have three children, including twins born in 2005. Equals equals selected filmography equals 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 unmade films equals equals equals. Deacon, 1970, a western. Game of Death, 1971-2. Equals 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 roles originally offered to Lazenby equals 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 James Bond in Diamonds Are Forever 1971 Live and Let Die 1973 and Never Say Never Again 1983 he turned down Ian's first offer to return while the second offer was not supported by the director during a Q&A session at the Sydney 2014 Supanova Pop Culture Expo Lazenby stated that the reason was because he was too hairy at the time Kevin McClory only considered Lazenby for his rival Bond film the role played by James Coburn in Duck, You Sucker, 1971, he turned it down. The part played by Gig Young in Game of Death, 1978. John Cleese says he wanted to cast Lazenby as Jesus Christ in the life of Brian, his agent turned it down. Equals equals references equals 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 external links equals equals official website George Lazenby at the Internet Movie Database George Lazenby at the National Film and Sound Archive 2005 interview Swindon Webb, the 10th of June 2005 Oshanker, Michael, Bond, Ing with George Lazenby Lazenby Palace Audion Post, the 26th of November 2008. Bond Star Bedded, A Woman a Day, Stuff, the 11th of September 2010.